Hello, welcome to the Mythology Manifest. This video is going to be about a very powerful and intelligent goddess within Greek mythology. She's the goddess of wisdom, creativity, and warfare. The palace, Athena. I hope you enjoy this video. Our story today begins before her birth at the wedding of Zeus and Hera, the new king and queen of the cosmos. They had recently defeated the Titans with their siblings and declared their love for one another. They invited every living creature on Earth including the Titans who had sided with them in the Great Titanomachy. The wedding was a grand affair and very over the top, perfect for the gods. In the eyes of Hera, everything was perfect. She was queen of the gods and had a loving husband. At least one of those was true. She was queen of the gods. She did not have a loving husband on the other hand. During the reception of their wedding, Zeus was reunited with an old flame, Metis, one of the Oceanid daughters of Oceanus and Tethys, and the Titan of Deep Thought. Now, in later myths, it was not uncommon for Zeus to cheat on Hera without motive. But this being the first time, he did have a deeper reason than just pure lust. Zeus had heard a prophecy which said that one day, a child of Metis would become more powerful than him and overthrow him as king of the gods. Like his father Kronos, Zeus was obsessed with keeping his power. He convinced Metis to sleep with him. Yep, on his wedding day. Zeus was with another woman who was not his wife. On his wedding day. For any of you new to Greek myths, Zeus is not good just because he is the king. It could be argued that he is one of the worst gods within mythology. Anyway, back to the story. When he was finished with Metis, Zeus said, I knew I could catch you. To which Metis responded saying, only because I allowed you to. Zeus laughed and dared Metis to try and get away from him. She turned into a fly and began to buzz away. Zeus grinned and turned into a frog. His tongue shot from his mouth and wrapped around Metis, dragging her into his mouth, where he then swallowed her and turned back to himself. The king of the gods chuckled to himself. Now no child of Metis could be born, he thought, and he returned back to his wedding as if nothing had happened. Months went by, and Zeus and Hera ruled from Olympus in literal paradise. All was well with the world, until Zeus started hearing voices and banging in his head. This level of insanity for Zeus was usually normal, but this time it was a little bit more. Each day, the banging got louder and louder, and Zeus's head began aching and throbbing. It got so bad that he was unable to move from his bed in Olympus because of the pain. Hera tended to him night and day and asked the other gods if they knew any cures. Zeus knew that it was Metis trying to get out of his head, but he was too stubborn to allow her to escape. Now, in some myths, it's Hephaestus who eventually cracks open Zeus's head, but in the version I am telling, Hephaestus has not been born yet. Instead, the pain got so incredibly unbearable for Zeus that one day he began screaming in pain setting off thunder and lightning across all the world. His normal cloudy eyes flashed white each time lightning struck. Hera was so worried about her husband that she sent for the Cyclops, who Poseidon had working in his underwater forges making we weapons. They had already made Zeus's thunderbolt, Poseidon's trident, and Hades' helm of darkness. The Cyclops were one-eyed blacksmiths, the children of Gaia and Uranus. One of them came with Hera to Mount Olympus, and saw Zeus squirming and writhing in pain while screaming and clutching his head. The Cyclops declared that the only way to relieve Zeus of his torture was to crack open his head and release what was whatever was clearly in there. Zeus tried to protest, but Hera wouldn't allow him. She was worried about her husband, but she was also curious as to what he was trying to hide. Hera called all the gods, Demeter, Poseidon, Hestia, and even Hades from the underworld, to witness the cracking open of the great god's skull. The Cyclops drew an axe from his sack, he swung it with force and it collided with Zeus's head with a loud bang and then a crack. The one-eyed forger removed the axe from Zeus's now open skull and it was covered in his golden eye cup. When the axe had been removed, a light shot from Zeus's head and landed on the floor where it began growing and growing and growing. Eventually, the light took shape and stopped glowing and growing. The shape it took was a woman. She looked slightly younger than the other goddesses, but was just as beautiful, yet also terrifying. 
She was dressed similarly to Hera, but was also in golden armour and carrying a large round shield. Zeus, whose head was now healed, was horrified to see that it was not Metis who had escaped his head, but another woman entirely. Hera did not like the look of the woman before her, and asked who she was. She responded, saying, I am Athena, child of Zeus and Metis, goddess of wisdom, battle strategy, and warfare. Hearing of her husband's adultery, Hera turned and fled, ignoring Zeus's calls of, I can explain. Not many people like Hera in mythology, and I get why, but it's understandable why she would be the way she is when Zeus put her through all of this and so much more in later myths. As she ran, Hera was already formulating a plan for revenge. She was not a goddess that you wanted to cross. Zeus had no choice but to accept Athena as his daughter. There was no way he could lie his way out of this. He was always wary of Athena because of the prophecy about a child Metis overthrowing him, but she did slowly become his favourite child, which is quite an achievement considering how many kids he actually ended up having. As for Metis, she remained in Zeus's head and became his conscience. And Athena was welcomed by all Olympians as the goddess of wisdom, creativity and battle strategy. I think there are three key lessons we can learn from this myth. One, don't cheat on your partner. Two, don't lie about anything serious, especially when it causes pain. And three, don't eat people to avoid prophecies. It doesn't work. Zeus should have learned from his father's mistakes, but I guess they do say, like father, like son. I hope you found this video entertaining and informative. If you did, please like and subscribe, and please comment any videos you would like to see in the future. Thank you for helping keep classics alive. My next video will be about the birth of Hephaestus. I'll see you next time on the Mythology Manifest.